Ninibong and welcome back to my channel where we talk about all things Transformers and Transformers action figure related and I'm coming at you today with part two of the Transformers versus Terminator review. If you want to jump back and see what I thought of issue one, which is this issue right here, uh, you can jump back. Uh, I'll put a link here, here, here somewhere around here, uh, and then you'll be able to jump back and see that review on what I thought of issue one. This is my review of issue two. We will jump straight into spoilers here, guys. So if you don't want this spoiled at all, then and you want to see how it all kicks off then jump into the first one where i do a bit of a, uh, a wrap up around the artwork and the story in general before i dip into some spoilers here i'm probably going to dip into spoilers straight away as this is the second issue second issue wise obviously the artwork continues to be fantastic within this the cover itself is absolutely beautiful i went for cover b again so you can see if i just bring out number one you can see i went for cover b2 which is more of the um the terminator stood on top of transformers rather than the the other way around um, I like the look of these cover bees so far. Not sure what I'll go with for episode three. To be fair, it took me quite a while to try and get hold of this. I actually found this quite a difficult one to, to actually pick up. Um, a guy on eBay let me down um, due to challenges around uh, viruses and things like this. So I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna call them out here. Um, and then my local comic shop, I went in there to buy it and everything was secured for other people. So then I had to go to the same comic shop, but online. So I actually got this from Forbidden Planet online um they came uh, very quickly so guys if you are looking for this i think forbidden planet still has some of these available um, and if you watch my review i'm not sure which one i'll post first but i'm also going to do a review around transformers 84 i also got that from forbidden planet as well so again the artwork on this one looks absolutely beautiful we see a load of transformers all busted up we can see bumblebee prime megs wheeljack sound wave all kinds of things happening down the bottom really really cool really really nice and an awesome picture of the t1000 stood in front of the arc this is a, a combination between idw and dark horse obviously dark horse still owning the property rights to terminator itself um really nice so we opened up so we know that in the last episode um where we finished with the last one was that the t1000 that had come back to 1984 was stood in the arc with all of the decepticons now being awake with a broken body of prime underneath and it said to be continued and then it is continued obviously in the second episode so with megatron being stood over the body of prime the terminator then attacks megatron at which point it just reflects off and bounces off but he can spot weak spots within transformers so you get like a, a really cool thing here of telling you where all of transformers uh, weak spots are so he knows how to actually get the vulnerability right. And he realizes that Megs' vulnerability is in his eye. So he blasts Megs right in the eye with some shotguns. And he moans about his optic being blasted in. And then after that, Starscream obviously starts opening up, shooting up everybody. And they release Ravage to chase after Sarah Connor. Um, a battle then ensues and you can see broken insecticons and things around it nice background images here um ravage starts shooting them up uh he picks up this this is a nice throwback to um is it daniel or spike somebody picks up an autobot weapon that looks exactly like this and shoots at uh, uh, decepticons it's a nice callback to that and um, then ravage really nice looking ravage in this as well i really like the the, the character modeling of ravage on this but ravage then starts to attack and they start shooting up the terminator 
so much and realizing that this isn't a human and that he's a cyborg underneath. But of course, Optimus Prime awakes after being scanned in the last episode by Sky Spy. But really nice. That's a really cool looking version of Prime. It's kind of um, not one that I've seen before. It's quite extended on his, uh, the, the horns on his head are quite um, extended. Really, really nice. I like this version of Prime. Ravage then attacks. Prime uses Ravage as a weapon. Uh, and then, of course, we can't have it without Bumblebee also suddenly being one of the main characters almost straight away. I'm kind of trying to remember, was he the second Autobot to be revived in the original G1 cartoon? Tell me down in the comments if you can remember. I, I honestly, off the top of my head, can't remember if he was. But then they have a battle. Sarah Connor pushes over Teletran's beam over to Bumblebee. So then Bumblebee awakens and we get this awesome face off between Megs and Prime. Looking absolutely fantastic. They have a battle. Uh, the Decepticons leave, believe it's not in their interest anymore to try and fight this battle. So they retreat, leaving Prime and Bumblebee with the T-1000. The T-1000 decides that all Cybertronians are an enemy, so it attacks Prime. But for some reason, Sarah Connor holds a lot of weight in this argument. I'm not sure why. But then Sarah Connor demands that they stop and actually talk it out. And when they talk it out, the, the T-1000 then tells the story of how in 1984, the Transformers in his world, or the Cybertronians as he calls them, attacked blowing up things all over the planet and eventually creating a domination over the earth. The humans rallied to try and create something to destroy them and the only thing that worked was actually Skynet. Skynet though could not save the humans and the human race died out so Skynet being the clever bastard that it is decided to submit to Decepticon rule but in the background create a time machine to try and fix all the challenges then prime says oh right okay that wouldn't be us though so prime then sets everything straight and says okay well we're, we're sorry that that happened to you uh, but they were the decepticons we are autobots and explains the difference between the two so it looks like they will then link up between the two then it cuts to the western coast of Oregon where we see Megs here on a cliff ready to attack something and what's he going to attack? Cyberdyne system so again really really nice we get some fantastic artwork in the back love this kind of concept art here um looking really nice love this one as well it's actually one of the covers if you want to grab this as a cover i think this is cover a really really awesome uh great art there by gavin fulton um there's my cover and then this one is also another cover that you can grab as well um then on the back just a few more concept drawings and concept arts that you get on the back uh, little descriptions here around the way that they were going with the art style in this but all in all another really really nice comic i'm super excited for part three loving this i really want to see some figures come out of this hasbro make it happen like you did with the ghostbusters one um but i've not seen anything as yet so unfortunately i don't think that's gonna happen so guys, let me know what you thought of uh, episode two, uh, oh, issue number two. I really enjoyed this issue. Artwork's great. I really like the way that the story is going. I think so far the character models for Prime and Bumblebee look absolutely fantastic. Uh, it'd be interesting to see how many more Transformers actually appear in this because Sky Spy was destroyed in the uh, first issue so it'll be interesting to see if they're managing to bring any more character models for the Autobots into issue 3 um, or is if it's just going to be the T-1000 Prime and Bumblebee now let me know your thoughts down in the comments guys and as always give us a like a share and a subscribe and I'll see you in the next video in a bit peace